game, game dev, dev journey. journey. And now we'll go and make another new scene. This is gonna be the main scene. So we're gonna click plus to make a new scene. This main scene is what ties all the pieces of the game together. It's gonna to manage the player, manage the coins, manage the timer, and all the other pieces of the game. So we're gonna create a new scene, and we're going to um, add a node, um, which we're gonna call main. So we're gonna just go plus, and I'm just gonna add a general node, the base class, create it, and we'll call this node main. Now, we're gonna have a few more nodes here that are gonna be children of main. We're gonna have a texture rect, which is gonna be for our background. We're going to have another node called coin container. It's gonna hold all the coins. We're gonna have a position 2D, which is going to hold the position of where the player should start when the game runs. And we're gonna have a timer which is going to be a game timer that's going to track the time limit because you're going to have a certain amount of time to run and, and collect coins. So let's add those children. So we're going to add plus here. We're going to add a texture rect over here. And this is going to be for our background. We're going to add a node which is just going to be a container for the coins. So we'll call it coin container or coin holder. We're gonna add a position 2D, which is going to store the player's position where the player must start. So we'll call it player start. And we're gonna have a timer, which we're going to call game timer. Right, so one thing to make sure of is that background is the first child of main because nodes are drawn in the order shown here. So background will be behind the player in this case. And we're going to add an image to the background by going to our assets here, finding background, and here's our beach sand background. Click on our background node. And in the inspector, you'll see that the background can have a texture, which is currently empty. If we drag our beach sand over to the texture and release, we'll now have beach sand as our background. That's much bigger than it needs to be. We can, we can leave it like this because you're not gonna see this part of, of you're not gonna escape the boundary of the screen because we've clamped. Um, but you could go ahead and, and resize this if you wanted to. Um, I don't think it's necessary here. We've got, you're gonna to have to click expand on to be able to resize it. But if you wanted to make it match, you can. I'll make it go slightly beyond. Right, there are other modes you can you can do for for these types of things. At the moment, it's it's in scale on expand. You could put it in tile mode or various other modes, depending on what you, what you want to do with or what kind of image you have for a background. Let's set the position of the player start node. So if we go to player start, this will be the position of the player when the player starts. And we generally want it to be either center, you know, directly in the center or bottom center, wherever it may be. So if we go to transform here, we've got the X and Y position. So let's just set it to 240 on the X and 350 on the Y. So there, that's where the player is going to start when the game begins. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that we should um, put our player in the main scene. So there are a couple of ways to do this. We can create an instance of the player by link by clicking the little chain links. We can click the chain links and then select player and click open. That will add the player to the scene. The other way to do it is we can just find our player scene, player.tscn, and drag it into um, main. And as I said before, we want player to be below background. Okay, so that the background is behind the player. 
Okay. Otherwise, if we put player in front of the background, um, you won't see the player at all. Okay, so now we've got our, our player scene in, in our main scene, as if the player was a custom made node that we had made ourselves. Right, let's get to the script. So we're gonna add a script to main, same way we've always done. Click on the little script icon over there, main, empty, create. Here's our script. We're going to export a, an entire scene as a variable so that we can see it in the inspector. So remember when we use the export keyword, it means that we are making the, we are exposing the variable or we're making it visible in the inspector. Okay, so what are we gonna export? Last time we exported a variable, it was just a simple integer variable controlling the speed of the player and we could enter a number. This time we're gonna export an entire scene as a variable. So the way you got to export a scene is you, you type in this um, keyword called packed scene. So it's going to pack the whole scene up into a little package or a into, a, into a variable that we're going to call um, coin. All right, so we're exporting a, an entire scene now for the coin. And we can export an, just an a integer and we'll call it playtime. And that will be um, how, well, that'll be the time limit for the game. Let's just save our main scene quickly as main.tscn. Okay, notice now that when I click on the main node over here, that coin is available as a variable. That's our packed scene there, coin. Okay, it's obviously empty at the moment, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our coin scene, which is here, and we're gonna put it in there. So now we've got our entire scene, our coin is, is there. Playtime is a, is a value we can choose. How long do you want to set the time limit for the game? Okay, but I thought it's interesting that you can export entire scenes as variables that are available in the inspector. Okay, we need a couple other variables for our game here. We need a variable to set the level, a variable for the score. We need a variable to tell us how much time is left. Um, we may as well have a variable for the screen size and a variable to decide whether we're currently playing or not. So playing, that can be a Boolean variable. So we'll set it to false. Currently we're not playing. And control S to save. So as I've said, the coin and playtime properties now appear in the inspector when we click on main. And we've now dragged our coin scene from our file system panel and we've dropped it into the coin property. Let's set the playtime to 30. We can always change this, but let's say we've got 30 seconds to grab as many coins as you can. And we'll use the rest of our variables later on. 